Good evening, my friends, and thank you for being with us. Tonight's program is presented in cooperation with Israel Bonds. Many of you know that Stephen Wise Temple has shared a very long relationship with Israel Bonds, and I'm pleased that that continues. We want to do all we can to encourage you to purchase a bond. It's a good investment in the state of Israel and a wonderful way to show your support. I work with two terrific people at Israel Bonds, Erez Goldman, the executive director of the Western Region, and Este Duenas, who works with him as well. Uh, there are no two people who could be finer partners, and I want to publicly acknowledge and thank them for their efforts. And with that in mind, I turn the evening over to Rabbi Yoshi Zweibach. I hope you all enjoy what promises to be a most interesting presentation. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so pleased and grateful to Dr. Ishai Rosensvi for joining us. He's currently studying and teaching and writing in Berlin, um, but most of the time he's in Tel Aviv as a professor at Tel Aviv University with a focus on Jewish philosophy and Talmud. And I first got a chance to study with Dr. Rosensvi, and this is the, the beautiful thing and the silver lining of the pandemic is I, I had a chance to study with him on a rabbinic webinar that was hosted by Israel Bonds, who are our co-sponsors this evening. So thanks everybody for supporting Israel through Israel Bonds. And I love the opportunity to study with Dr. Rosensvi and I talked to Rabbi Wozniaka and I said, hey, let's see if we could get him to come to the temple and we can do it through uh, the, the miracle of Zoom. And, and that's exactly what's happening now because we're talking to each other across nine time zones. But I'm so glad that you could be with us. It's almost Shavuot. And uh, your expertise is in the way some of these biblical holidays <clears throat> transform during rabbinic periods and continue to transform through the medieval period and, and into today. So this is a great opportunity for us to to, to talk about that. So maybe you could just start by setting the scene for us a little bit about Shavuot as a biblical holiday, and then we'll talk about how it transforms. But what are the origins of Shavuot? How did, how did it start? Okay, so first, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you virtually. And so let me share a screen and uh, show you some of the really um, kind of uh, setting the scene about, um, about Shavuot. Okay. So here it is. The secret history of Shavuot, you'll, you'll, you'll um, um, I understand in a, a few minutes why uh, is it the history and why is it uh, 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 secret. So uh, Shavuot began as a, a normal uh, um, holiday agriculture, holiday, um, the, 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 you know, all these uh, uh, three regalim that we know Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot are, um, uh, 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 you know, in their origin uh, uh, holidays of uh, uh, celebrating our agriculture, uh, um, you know, uh, faith in the year first uh, Passover, right? The, the, the harvesting of the uh, uh, barley, then um, uh, Shavuot, 50 days later, the harvesting of the, of the wheat and, and the new, the, the first fruits of the wheat, and then Sukkot, uh, the, the end of the, of the season. So that's basically what we have, nothing too uh, fancy, nothing too uh, special. The, the question is, how did Shavuot uh, came to be Chag Matan Torah? When uh, uh, and especially why did it happen? And, and that's, I think, the secret part of our uh, uh, story. So it goes from um, goes from an agricultural somehow it goes from an agricultural holiday to this holiday, and you said uh, Chag Matan Torah. So for non-Hebrew speakers, that is the holiday that celebrates our receiving of Torah. Right, right. And how did this holiday that celebrates Omer Reshit Ktsirchem, the first the, the the first fruits, the harvest of the of the uh, sheaves of the wheat? How did it become a Matan Torah? That's a huge 
uh, leap, right? That's a that's a very so so I I want to um, um, show some steps in the in the way and look all holidays are you know changing and and getting new uh, meaning receiving new meaning we know that we know that for example after the destruction of the temple um, Yom Kippur the Day of Atonement became from a temple centered holiday of uh, kapara and of uh, cleansing the, the the temple to a a day of uh, um of of um, of tshuva and 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 more personal and more uh, spiritual etc and, and and Passover became from a a, a holiday of sacrifice into a holiday of lela seder of teaching of study of but even after we know all this shavuot you know have has a very um surprising and, and kind of uh, um, um, unique uh, history. So let's let's um, uh, let's roll. Okay. So the first thing is the Shavuot is the only holiday that um, does not have a set date. Okay, and that's very important. It's you you have to count fifty days after uh, Passover, after the 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 Reshit Ktsirchev, the first harvest of of Passover, you have to count 50 days and you get to uh, to this to the next holiday of Shavuot. So first remember this, we have no date for Shavuot, okay? Um, so Passover, then seven weeks, and then uh, Shavuot, the, the Bikurim of the, the first fruit of the grape, okay? Now, there's a book, very interesting, very uh, um, fascinating, called the Book of Jubilees from second century BCE, okay? Um, and that's the first time this Book of Jubilees, which is considered by the rabbis Farim Chitzonim, external books that are not part of the, of the study house, but uh, was very, very um, important for the, the ancient Jews. We know, for example, that in the Dead Sea Scrolls, for the sectarians in the in the Qumran uh, uh, community, they had multiple uh, uh, multiple copies of this book. It was a, a, a very important book in ancient time, and that's the first place where we find this identification between the the holiday of uh, uh, um, of Shavuot of Bikurim and Matan Torah. Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah, is located in the same date of Shavuot. In the middle of Sivan, we have the, the, the holiday of Ptzir Chitim in the middle of the month, and we have also Matan Torah. Why? Why did they make this identification? So let's move on. So what do we know about the date of Matan Torah? Okay. What we know is that it's on the uh, third uh, month, Sivan, when, no exact date, but then the Torah says on that very day, by Yom Azeh, they came to the uh, 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 wilderness of Sinai. And of course, ancient interpreters, ancient uh, commentators ask themselves, what is this very day? It should be a very special day, right? just that we don't know which day is it, okay? So we have here a um, very major event without a specific date. And remember that Shavuot does not have a specific date too, right? All we know about Shavuot that it's somewhere in uh, Sivan, right? And that's also what we know about Matan Torah. But that's not enough, right? The, the, the fact that both of them are... Um, uh, the same, uh, let's say, uh, area, uh, that, that, that's still not enough. So let's continue. Um, as I said, uh, ancient interpreters look for the date of uh, Shavuot, and here you can see in the Bavli that they're doing very sophisticated calculation, and we have here only its very beginning to show that this very day of Matan Torah is uh, indeed uh, uh, the day of 
um, uh, Shavuot, but it's a very complicated uh, um, uh, calculation. You can look at uh, Bavli uh, Shabbat later. So, so this is, hold did. on, Dr. Dr. Rosensby. So now we're going from, so we started in the Bible. You took us to the book of Jubilees, which didn't make it into the Hebrew Bible, but it's, right. it's the source we still right. have. And now we're in the Talmud. So, right. so in terms of our dating, now we're going forward four or 500 more well, years, right? Fast forward. Yes. Okay. Just to show you, just to show you that ancient interpreters were all, you know, uh, um, um, uh, uh, struggling with this same riddle, okay, of, of, of uh, uh, when is Matan Torah and, and when is Shavuot and, and what's going on here exactly. Uh, but here, now we get to, um, to the uh, uh, kernel of, 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 of our, um, of our uh, issue. We have three regalim, three times in the year, right? The three major holidays, the uh, festival of, of um, matzot, right? Of the unleavened bread. We have the festival of the harvest, Shavuot. And then we have the festival of in gathering Sukkot. Now, we know that what happened to these holy days is that they started as agriculture holidays, but then, you know, they, um, they became also, they also commemorate historical, right, major national uh, historical events. So that's how Chag HaMatzot became also Chag HaPesach, right? Ufasachti alabatim, it <coughs> commemorate the Exodus. And Chag Asif Sukkot, became also a festival of the uh, Right, the, the, the God's leading the Israelite in the desert. So remember, Sukkot, the booth, is the Sukkot of the gatherers, because that's the, the season of the gathering. But then it became also, right? It, it also came to, <clears throat> to, to uh, um, um, kind of uh, was boosted by uh, um, the, the historical, and we, we, and it's clear why, because, you know, agriculture is, you know, for peasants, right? But uh, uh, when Israelite became, um, you know, uh, less and less depend on, uh, on agriculture, and certainly after the exile, and, you, you know, the, this was not, uh, um, uh, kind of um, um, uh, uh, relevant or, or central, and so uh, it became to it came to commemorate historical event, except for Shavuot. Chag Katzin did not have any historical event. So look, so we have here a Chag, right? Harvesting of 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 the wheat, uh, which is exceptional. It does not have a date. It does not have any historical event, right? Um, and on the other hand, we have uh, Matan Torah, which also does not have a date, but it has this uh, very unique uh, um, uh, kind of um, uh, uh, strange statement, uh, uh, on this very day. So all these are, you know, kind of factors leading to uh, um, to 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 uh, uh, to, to uh, where we got uh, eventually, but all this is not enough. What is needed, like always in history, is um, a good fight, and a good fight we did get a fight between the different groups in ancient Israel, the different sects, the Kitot, right? Why? Because again, Shavuot does not have a date. So there was a huge debate and it was huge, right? About when do we start counting Shavuot and therefore also when is uh, the day of Shavuot. And remember, in many halachic debates, you can have compromises, but not in terms of the right of dates. Of the of the calendar, right? Because if you have different dates, 
then you are split into different sects. And we know that from the famous story in Mishnah Rosh Hashanah about Yom Kippur, right? That they had to, Rabban Gamliel, had to coerce, uh, right? Rabbi Yoshua to, uh, uh, to celebrate Yom Kippur on the, the date that he decided in order not to split the community. So between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, there was a, a debate about the counting of Shavuot. And that's why the Mishnah says that the, the, the Omer, the beginning of the counting was, with, was done with great fanfare. The Esek Gadol. And here you have the whole Esek, the whole, uh, uh, um, you know, a big deal of, of the, 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 the beginning of the counting in Mishnah Menachot. Why? All this, why? Right? Because of the Baitusin, right? The Sadducees that uh, uh, did not accept this, uh, uh, this uh, count of the, of the rabbis. So now you have, you know, the kind of the, the match, right? The, the, what you needed in order to make it into something that became a kind of... Um, uh, um, uh, what we call Mivchan Shibolet, right? It became this kind of uh, 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 test, right? Whom do you, uh, uh, um, uh, which group do you uh, uh, belong to? So hold on. So this is, so just to clarify, everybody agrees that you're supposed to count seven weeks between right. one holiday to the next. But the debate right. is, when do you start the counting? Is exactly. it on the first day of Passover? Is it on the second day of Passover? Is it on the Shabbat right. of Passover? And obviously the consequences would be significant because that would decide what day this right. holiday was on. Right. And that makes Shavuot a very important celebration because it, it became a kind of test of, right, of which group are you, uh, uh, right, uh, um, do you... Uh, uh, um, 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 do, do you relate to, right? A according to your holiday, okay? And the, the, the final step, I would say, is that the, these sectarians, uh, and here again, we're in the book of Jubilees, these sectarians had this idea that the covenant has, must be um, re renewed every year, right? The idea of the, uh, uh, I hope I'm not saying something too scandalous. The idea of the new covenant is not a Christian idea. The Christians took it from, a, of course, it's a, it's a biblical uh, theme. The, the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah talks about the new covenant, right? The Karatim, Bnei Israel, Ebrit Chadasha, right? Uh, but that was uh, uh, taken by the sectarians Right, uh, and I'm talking about the before Christianity was even uh, born in second century BCE. The idea that the covenant must be renewed. When is the covenant renewed every year? So here again, there is a lacuna. Right, there is a, a holiday, an agriculture holiday, without any historical event. Right, and it became a huge, uh, very important holiday because it. Uh, it, it was a test to your belonging, right? And so the book of Jubilees says uh, Chag Shavuot is the Chag of the Covenant, right? Is the Chag of the renewing the Covenant. And they read Shavuot as Shvuot, okay? Meaning off or covenant, right? Chag HaShvuot, the, the holiday of the renewed uh, uh, off of the renewed covenant, okay? So here we have a, a full circle and here is our secret. The secret is that Shavuot becomes first Chag Matan Torah, not in rabbinic literature, not in the Talmud, not in the Mishnah, but rather in sectarian circles that, uh, that use this holiday without meaning, uh, I mean, without historical meaning, to enlist it into their concept of the renewed covenant. That's how Shavuot as Chag Matan Torah was born. Mm. Wow, so, and there's a, there's a lovely word play. Maybe you could just, again, for people who aren't Hebrew speakers, um, play with the word Shavua 
as as weeks, the seven weeks yeah. between Passover and this other holiday, and then uh, it can also mean a promise, right? Because you know, uh, they they of course scriptures uh, were not punctuated, right? And and so in Hebrew, right, shin bet vav ayin, right, could be shavua week and could be also shvua on. Okay, and Shavua is a pretty technical week, but if you can say that this is the hug of the Shavuot, right, of the of the covenant of the renewed covenant, that's already a a you know a serious meaning. And then, and then, and here's the next twist: it was adopted by the early Christians. We know that the Pentecost is a very important Christian holiday. What is Pentecost? Pentecost in Greek. Pentecost is 50, 50 days, right? You should count 50 days. So 50 days after Pesach, and Pesach, of course, is the most important holiday also for Christianity, Easter, right? Because that's uh, uh, the Last Supper and the crucifixion. So, and what is the Pentecost? If we look here at the book of Acts, the Pentecost is the holiday of when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, right? And you can see in this chapter that it's all about a, a kind of a, 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 a huge spectacle vision with fire and everything. And it is clear that they're mimicking here Sinai, the giving of Torah. So um, the book of Acts basically adopts this idea of Pentecost as the, the holy day of um, the, the, the giving of uh, Torah and adapts it to its own right understanding of the new covenant to the goyim, to the, all the nations, right? That opening now the Torah for, uh, 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 for all the uh, uh, nations, for all the peoples. So before it, it, it became Chag Matan Torah for the rabbis, it was a, a, um, a, the, the, the holiday of the giving of Torah for the sectarians and then for the early Christians. If we, if we understand that, we can understand why the rabbis, and, and this is of course one of hundreds and hundreds of pictures depicting this holiday of, of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit, right, in the, in the, in the figure of a white dove, right, uh, descend on the disciples. And there is, this is very, very popular theme in, in Western uh, um, art. And here we have just one example from a Baroque um, um, artist uh, of the, of the uh, 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 Pentecost. And, and, but, but this is a Jewish theme, right? It's Chag Matan Torah. It's the holy day of the giving of, of Torah, of the new covenant. If we understand that, we can understand why the rabbis were really reluctant on this matching of Shavuot and Matan Torah, because this is a sectarian idea. This is, if you like, a Christian idea. And so the early rabbis did not even have a fixed date for Shavuot, right? Because um, both Iyal and Sivan could be, you know, um, um, of um, fuller, full uh, uh, month or, right? Or, or um, missing month, right? 29, uh, 30 uh, days. And so it does not have a fixed date. So they say, you know, Atzeret could be on the 5th of Sivan, the 6th of Sivan, the 7th of Sivan, no sooner or later. If it does not have a date, of course it could not be Chag Matan Torah because it's, it, it, it's not even fixed. And I believe that this is not, you know, a, a naive uh, uh, statement. Rather, it says, you know, our Shavuot is not your Shavuot. And it took time until the rabbis also, right, adopted this idea. And you know where we find it? For the first time 
for the first time, the idea that Shavuot is Chag Matan Torah is not in the Mishnah, but rather in the Tosefta, in the third century CE, okay, some 500 years after the Book of uh, Jubilees and some 200 years after the Book of Acts. And it appears in a very modest way. The, the Tosefta in Megillah that, that detail all the, the different readings, liturgy in the synagogue, the Tosefta in Megillah said on Atzeret, on, Pestaca, uh, on uh, Pentecost, we read seven weeks, that's the regular reading, seven weeks, meaning the, 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 the portion on Shavuot. And some say the Yeshomrim on the third new moon, meaning Exodus 19, the, the portion of Sinai, of the giving of Torah. So it begins modestly as a Yesh Omrim, right? As a, as a you know, a, a, a kind of marginal opinion that maybe we should read Matan Torah, the portion on, uh, on the giving of Torah on uh, Shavuot. And then the Bavli, the Babylonian Talmud says, well, yes, now that we have two days of Shavuot, we can read both both the portion of Shavuot and the portion of, of Matan Torah. So you see that it started in a very uh, uh, modest way until, uh, of course, for us, it's totally neutral, right? That, uh, that, that Shavuot is Matan Torah. But as you see, it, it has a, in, in a kind of interesting and tormented uh, history. It's so fascinating, and to see the, the the historical development and the political angle. You know, often we we think of our religious tradition as as being above politics and these sort of sectarian disputes. Yeah. But the deeper yeah. we dig into it, we realize it's very much embedded in the world in which we find it. I want to talk about the transformation uh, of Shavuot in terms of its the way it's celebrated. And, and ask you to talk a little bit about the Tikkun Leil Shavuot. Because okay. uh, again, many of us, if you start to put the layers, the historical layers and kind of smoosh them together, you know, you can imagine like Moses had the first Tikkun Leil Shavuot, which obviously is, uh, you know, not the case, um, but that's, that's a much later development. How does that start to happen? Maybe talk a little bit about the origins of the Tikkun Leil Shavuot and, uh, and then we can touch on the way it continues to evolve, because one of the things that's so fun about this, for me, is to see these historical moments where, where there's a pivot point. It, something meant one thing, and then it starts to mean something else. And we think yeah. about that today, uh, when we're going to later talk a little bit about the way Shavuot is celebrated in Israel today. It's very different than the way it was celebrated even 30 or 40 years ago. But first yeah. talk a little bit about the Tikkun Lel Shavuot, its origin, where did that come from? Okay. Um, so, okay. So first, already in the uh, early Midrashim, in the rabbinic Midrashim, there is a new, um, very uh, fascinating idea that Matan Torah, the giving of Torah uh, uh, on Sinai, was an event of wedding, okay? It was a romantic event of wedding. And here, let's read this adrasha that Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet God. And Rabbi Yossi, okay, to meet God. And Rabbi Yossi says, Yehuda used to expound, the Lord came from Sinai, Adonai mi Sinai ba, that's the, 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 the song of Ha'azinu at the end of Dvarim. Do not read it thus, Adonai mi Sinai ba, but read the Lord came to Sinai, Adonai le Sinai ba, right? To give the Torah to Israel, right? But I, Rabbi Yossi said, I have a different interpretation. I do read Adonai mi Sinai ba, to receive Israel as a bridegroom comes forth to meet the bride. So Adonai Misinai Ba, meaning the bridegroom stands under the chuppah and then go forth, right, to accompany the, 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 the bride. So Misinai from the chuppah, just imagine the setting, right? 
he comes and accompany the the bride. We can all in our head already hear the right the, the right the, the the songs of the of the chupa and um, etc. Um, so that's a rabbinic innovation. Um, that's not something that we find earlier. Okay, so if there is a wedding, then all these preparations in Sinai, right, that we read in Exodus 19, right, prepare yourself for three days, all these are preparation for chupa, right, for wedding. So, so that's where it starts. But that's not Tikkun Lel Shavuot yet. Tikkun Lel Shavuot properly is a pretty late innovation. And in fact, we know pretty exactly when and where did it start. And the fact is that this is not rabbinic, it's not even medieval, okay? It's a 16th century innovation that started in 1533 in Saloniki in a group of um, exiles from Spain, okay, that moved from Spain to uh, uh, Saloniki and to other um, uh, places in the Ottoman Empire that received them with open um, hands and uh, in these between, uh, among these exiles in Saloniki were uh, two rabbis that we uh, know pretty well. One of them is Shlomo El Kavetz, the, 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 the uh, poet who, who, uh, um, who uh, composed for us Lecha Dodi. And the other is Rabbi Yosef Karo, the, uh, um, the, the, the author of the Shulchan Aruch and the, the, the great Posik. And they were sitting there in Saloniki and, and, and they had a vision. And the vision was that the uh, Shechina, the, 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 the holy dwelling, right, of, of uh, God on this, uh, on earth, right, asked them, to make this tikkun. And tikkun in Hebrew has a double meaning. Tikkun is to fix because the shechina now is, uh, is uh, uh, right in the uh, galut, in the exile. And for them, of course, the exile is both the original exile of, of Israel, right? And their own exile, right? from. Uh, the Shechina is in exile. So they make the, the, the political condition, you, you spoke about the, uh, the politics, they made the political condition into a metaphysical one, okay? So the Shechina is in exile and they have to, to raise it, to fix it, right? And by the way, Gershom Sholem, the great uh, 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 scholar of Kabbalah, made this event a, a linchpin of his a theory of you know the 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 um, Kabbalah Kabbalah the, the 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 mysticism of of the Lurianic mysticism uh, as as coming from this traumatic event of the um, uh, expulsion from Spain that became a metaphysical event. It's not us that were expelled, but the Shechina itself, and we have to fix it. But uh, tikkun is not only fixing, tikkun is also preparation, and more specifically, adornment. Letaken et akala is to adorn the, the, the bride, to prepare the bride, okay? So what they're doing was to prepare the shechina for, uh, 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 for the wedding. And that was in Saloniki, in Shavuot, of 1533, and we know a lot about this event because Shlomo El Kavetz wrote a, a whole uh, description, um, kind of um, um, uh, cryptic with all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, hints, but a, a, a long description, it's called Igeret El Kavetz, you can find it online, the, the letter, the epistle of El Kavetz narrating this story, and then 
um, uh, when they moved from Saloniki to Tzfat, right, and where they they made this uh, uh, very important, very uh, influential, uh, mystical group uh, uh, that is known uh, now as uh, Kabbalat Tzfat, the, the, the mysticism of, of Tzfat, it, it became, this event became a kind of um, uh, a, a almost a mythical event that was then imitated and, and replicated. And that's basically the source of uh, uh, Tikkun Lel Shavuot. So when you do Tikkun Lel Shavuot, know that what you do is to adorn the Shechina, to prepare the Shechina for this uh, wedding, for this event of uh, uh, Matan Torah. I love that there's a connection too between covenant. You know, you were talking earlier about uh, the Brit Chadasha, which uh, which is the the renewal of the covenant at Sinai for us as Jews, and now you have this opportunity to think about this um, you know this beautiful uh, connection of of the human with God and and sort of reaffirming that year by year. There's something really powerful and beautiful in that. And again, we get to see the way this holiday continues to transform. I'd love to uh, to think a little bit about. Uh, where it is today, and maybe you could even, you know, share a little bit uh, of, of your own experience of this as an Israeli. But um, I've noticed in the in the time I lived in Israel for five years, and over the time that I lived there, from the early '90s to when I moved back in uh, uh, 2009, all of a sudden, uh, Shavuot <clears throat> in in cities like Tel Aviv which uh, a tikkun leil shavuot for secular Israelis was not something that had any resonance. It wasn't something that people really experienced. Yeah. And suddenly with, uh, you know, with, with a newfound interest and a newfound openness, places like you know, the secular yeshiva and Bina mm -hmm. and other organizations like that in Israel that are really trying to bring uh, our tradition to Israelis uh, who might not have been open to that previously, all of a sudden, uh, a tikkun leil shavuot. You see, half the city is out studying at night in new ways. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that development, where that comes from, and and how yeah, you yeah. see that maybe continuing. Yeah. No. Uh, certainly. Uh, I mean, if you if you go um, 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 these days in uh, on in, in uh, Rothschild uh, Avenue on Shavuot night, you have all these different. Uh, classes of, of, you know, Torah classes, and you ask yourself, well, <laughs> what's happening? Is this Yomot HaMashiach or, or what? But uh, we, have a, we have to um, uh, a, a, a step before that. And the step before that is what happened to Shavuot in the uh, Zionist, the early Zionist uh, um, ideology. And here they return to the biblical. We, we had this idea that now we can return to the agriculture, right? Since we've returned to, to the land, we can return to the agriculture meaning of Shavuot and to the idea of Bikurim, right? Of the first fruits. Just that now we're not giving the Bikurim to uh, God. We're giving to the Bikurim to the nation, right? So we had this renewed agriculture holiday, only that now it became a kind of national holiday. And it was a very, it, it was a big thing in, uh, mainly in the kibbutzim, um, uh, that Shavuot became the, the kind of uh, uh, um, uh, first fruits, uh, like Thanksgiving, basically. Um, uh, the, the first fruits, um, uh, 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 to the uh, uh, to the uh, nation and, and later to the state. But then um, there is another twist, as, as we've seen, twist after twist, twist after twist. Uh, holidays are living creatures, and 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 Shavuot much more than than uh, others because of its uh, kind of cryptic. Uh, you know, origins and, and that it did not have a very clear, you know, historical, uh, um, historical uh, 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 meaning. And yet it became this, this uh, locus of, of debate very early on. So it, 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 it kind of uh, uh, was a, was a, uh, uh, it, 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 it was a magnate 
of, of, of all kinds of meanings as, as we've seen, you know, from very early on, from, from Book of Jubilees and Acts and, and, and then the Midrash and then the, 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 um, the, the uh, Lurianic mysticism. So the, the, the last uh, uh, stage for now, no one knows what will happen tomorrow, but the, 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 the last stage for now is this secular tikkunim, which is really fascinating. And here again, we know uh, exactly where and when it started. It started with a, a very um, important uh, a thinker and, and scholars, not, I think, known enough, Meir Ayali, in Kibbutz Yifat in the Galilee in 1966. That's where the first uh, a secular tikkun was made. And his idea was that these, this secular, uh, secularized, uh, nationalized Shavuot is not enough. He wanted to reclaim basically uh, Matan Torah, okay? And uh, he started with the idea that the Torah is also ours, that the Torah is not only for uh, the religious, for the Orthodox um, a community. And at, at the beginning, it was very modest, but then it became more and more popular uh, because this idea of reclaiming became more and more popular. The idea that, you know, it's also ours and the acknowledgement that if we want it to be ours, we have to have a clue. And mm -hmm. if we want it to be ours, we have to be active, okay? So Shavuot became both a locus a, of, of uh, you know, learning and also a statement. So we started with politics and we ended politics, meaning that it, also, it was always about the community, about the politeia, okay? Politics in the, in the deep sense of that, it's it's about us and our relationship to the tradition, to uh, scripture. It's beautiful. I'd love to maybe end with a, a personal question if you're open to it, which is, you know, this is now the, the third or fourth time I've gotten a chance to study with you. And one of the things I love is the way you so effortlessly uh, weave together these sources from all of these different layers of Jewish history. I mean, you took us through all of these texts, but you really took us through, you know, centuries and centuries, millennia, really, of intellectual history from biblical texts to the Book of Jubilees to different rabbinic texts and all these layers up through uh, the Epistle of uh, Shlomo Alkabetz, which is, uh, you know, 16th century, and then even to, to our very own day. So I love the way you do that. And one of the things I appreciate is your passion as you're unpacking this you get excited and, and you bring that excitement to the student, which is wonderful. Maybe you could, uh, you could say a little bit about your own journey into these texts and, and what is it about all of this that excites you so much in your, in your scholarship and, uh, and in your own personal story? Wow, that's a heavy one. So um, I, I, I come from a um, religious family I'm not an observant, um, um, I'm not observant um, now, uh, but I came from a, a religious family. My, my father was a kind of um, modern Orthodox, uh, um, modern um, 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 Orthodox. And, and I went to a yeshiva and I studied uh, many years. Um, and um, I've, oh, I, I did a long way and kind of, uh, uh, a twisted way, but one thing that remained all along is really the, the passion for these uh, texts. I think that was kind of, uh, that was my, my the, the leading, um, you know, thread that, you know, th that's how I knew if, if you really want me to get uh, personal, that's how I knew that I'm not, you know, uh, uh, losing um, the, the, the way that uh, my, my engagement with my passion uh, with these uh, texts um, uh, uh, remain all alone and, and kind of uh, accompanied me uh, because it, it just, I don't know, it's just the coolest text on earth. It's, it's, and, and, and you can see why. It's, you know, the, the freedom and, and th th that it, it, it never stops. It's, you know, there's always another um, circle in another circle and, 
and uh, Midrash allows you, you know, these tools basically can take you to, uh, you know, it's, it's like a, a, a never ending kind of uh, slide that uh, you never know what the next um, step is. So yeah, that's where I am. I love that. Uh, I love that. And you talked about holidays as being living things. And obviously, uh, because they continue to transform. And even as we think about the way we've celebrated holidays during this time of pandemic, we had to find new ways um, to, to make these things live. And, and we have and will continue to do that. And these texts are living things. They continue to evolve. We change and we read them in new ways. And the world changes. And that helps us read them in new ways. So, so I love that energy. And I, and I think I certainly share your, your passion and enthusiasm for all of this. And one of the things maybe to end with is, you know, you talked about all of these different um, sects of Judaism throughout the years, whether it was the, you know, the Essenes or the, uh, the you know, the Pharisees or the Sadducees, um, you know, mystical uh, sects of Judaism, and now the, the kibbutz movement and, you know, where we are today. And I, I just think of that text from Deuteronomy, uh, from Parashat Nitzavim, Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kulchem. Uh, you know, we stand together today, all of us, you know, babies and, and old people, yeah. uh, men and women, the heads of the tribes, and also, you know, just the schleppers who are carrying the wood, you know, but we're all there. And I think the, the for me, the goal is to, to have everybody feel like they have a, a voice in this, they have a stake in this. We all stood together, we all stand together, and, uh, and whatever differences we might have, all the different ways we, we might understand these texts, that's what it is to be part of this people, is to be in conversation with uh, this tradition. So thank you so much, Dr. Rosensvi, and uh, hopefully one of these days we'll get to meet each other in person, <laughs> uh, either in Los Angeles or Tel Aviv or Jerusalem or wherever it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.